everybody. My name is Brittany Sheehan, and I don't care if you call me an anti-vaxxer. I am a freedom lover, a patriot, a political organizer, a proponent of bodily sovereignty, of medical privacy, and of religious rights. I'm the daughter of a Cuban immigrant who escaped an oppressive communist regime, legally, by the way. Since coming to this great country, not even a single generation had passed before I too found myself escaping a government regime. They call me an anti-vaxxer, but what I am is a religious refugee who fled the persecution of the state of California. Anti-vaxxer is supposed to be one of the worst things to be called, but one of the greatest things to be called is a free person. A year ago, I wouldn't have been invited to speak on this issue on this stage. A year ago, adults were using children as shields by standing behind them, not in front of them. They turned a blind eye when tens of thousands of American students were kicked out of schools in California and in New York. They said nothing when the Orthodox Jews were targeted and their children restricted from public places in Rockland County. They didn't even hear about the Amish being barred from using their own 24 student schoolhouse. You may have been one of those people and I'm not mad at you. Today, you're probably one of the people who tells me, I'm not an anti-vaxxer, but I don't get a flu shot or I'm not an anti-vaxxer, but I don't want a COVID vaccine. Cute, love that. Up the term so that you would squirm if ever your ideas, your desire for freedom, led you to not agree to the government's list of drug products they are currently scheming on how to coerce you into taking. The label is a form of social stigma and lends to intimidation and retribution. So I don't care if you call me an anti-vaxxer, I only hope that you are willing to be called the same. Because worse than a nonsensical label is a government subjugating its people. Worse than a label is Bill Gates acting as the world's doctor. Worse than a label is a governor holding us hostage in masks until they arm themselves with syringes and target our families. So if you know your media is basically state-run propaganda, and if you know censorship is the new hallmark of all good information, if you know that every right in this country is God-given and the governor has no authority over our liberty, over our bodies, and over our choice of medicine, please stop playing their game, ducking and dodging a silly label. Believes in, as a person who actually cares for dental patients, he believes in basic medical ethics like consent and basic American principles like the Constitution. So while you, while you may have never heard what my beloved anti-vaxxers have been saying, you may have never joined them in a legislative battle, and you might be holding on to some beliefs that don't reflect the reality of the limitations of pharmaceutical saviorism, what I cannot do standing here on this stage is some kind of matrix effect where I download 10 years of reading and experiences into your brain. What I can do is offer the primary questions that we all need to be asking. Is it fundamentally okay for you to be born into human form and simply exist? Yes? <laughs> if that question gave you pause, I don't fault you, but let's make it more personal. Is existing in your body as you are today a pseudo crime? And that, my friends, is the line in the sand. Tomorrow, existing in your own body as you are right now will be an act of rebellion. Tomorrow, when they have a new drug they want you to take, standing there in your own body will make you a social enemy. You will be persecuted. I've seen it, I've lived it, and I've fought it. All I've ever done is just be a human that doesn't want their drugs. I cannot convey how bizarre of an experience it is to just be considered an extremist for waking up in a human body. And that's what I want you to understand here today. They labeled us so you would think we were different than you. They tried to dehumanize us, but we aren't other. I'm here to tell you one thing, we are you. That our children are your children. Our future generations, the grandchildren of our grandchildren, they are our common kin. We decide today if in 100 years from now, they can subjugate our great-grandchildren and force more drugs onto them. We decide today if there is a requisite list of drugs they haven't even created yet, that will be the standard of what makes them acceptable humans in the eyes of the state. My mother had to escape communist Cuba. I fled another regime. I'll make it my life's work that one day our children, our grandchildren, won't ever have to flee their government. Call it whatever you want. I call it patriotism. Our founding fathers threw that tea into the harbor 
And that T wasn't even mandatory. That T didn't even code their cells to create a pathogenic protein. That T didn't come with a list of side effects. So to the king I say, screw your labels and keep your T. Our rights come from God and the people of Nevada are free. Yeah. Yeah.